Are you cruising through life not always knowing what direction you were headed? Let Live On Purpose with Dr. Paul Jenkins be your guide. Live On Purpose will give you insights into your life and show you how you can become the driver and captain of it. No more aimless wandering. By learning the principles that govern happiness and wealth, you will be able to make personal progress that you have only dreamed possible. And now, here's your host, the shrink who expands your life, Dr. Paul. And here we go with another exciting episode of Live on Purpose. I'm Dr. Paul, the shrink who expands your life and your mind and your wallet. And we're expanding everything that we can here on Live on Purpose. And we want you to do just that, to live on purpose. And so we're bringing you a great new show oh, about once every week or so. You're going to get this uh, uploaded to your iPod or your computer. This is a podcast episode. And we're just glad that you're here. Please spread the word if you enjoy the program. We want to touch as many lives as possible with the principles that will help you to create and live the life that you love. That's what we're all about here. I have another great guest with me in studio today. My friend and associate, creation tree coach, counselor, therapist. He does all kinds of great stuff. Craig Rollo. Hello, Craig. Hello, Paul. Thank you. I, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, I'm glad to be here. I, I just want to say one thing. We want to expand everything but your waistline. Oh, yeah. Well, and we've got an affiliate, a sister company called Creation Tree Fitness. So, you know, if you're going down that road, we can probably hook you up there, too. Absolutely. <laughs> a lot of good things happening. Craig, I'm glad to have you with me here today. I want to give the listeners just a little bit of oh, background as to where you and I are coming from. That sounds good. We had an interesting experience here about, what's it been? like Two and a half two years. Two and a half, three years ago. Yeah. When uh, we took a bunch of boys out for what's called the Klondike Derby. Now, those of you who aren't familiar with this, I don't know where you're listening in from. If you're coming in from Florida or California or something, you may have no clue what a Klondike Derby is. Now, those of you who live up here in the great white north and, well, Utah is sort of, <laughs> you know. <laughs> sort of. We're more north than some and less north than others. But anyway, during the winters here, we get quite a bit of snow, especially up in the mountains. And a Klondike Derby is an experience for the Boy Scouts where they go out during the winter and we do a winter camp and they have all kinds of little activities that they do with sleds and sometimes they'll dig snow caves and, and we basically just freeze our buns off and have a good time for a couple of days. <laughs> well, Craig and I were both up there uh, leading a group of Boy Scouts in a Klondike Derby. We got up early, as we are both wont to do, and took a walk. And we took a little walk... Uh, up the hillside there, and we just got to talking. And, and at that time, we'd known each other for a while, but we didn't really know each other very well yet. And uh, we had a great talk. We talked about our, uh, our goals and what we're trying to do with our careers and helping people. Craig is a marriage and family therapist. I'm a psychologist. And so we had a lot of convergence in the kinds of things that we were doing. Well, we got to the top of this hill, and there was this beautiful lodge that was overlooking the lake, and we both had a thought almost simultaneously, oh, this would be a great place to hold a couple's retreat. Is that pretty that, close to how you remember it, that, Craig? That is exactly how I remember it. And we had both, at some point earlier in our careers, we had both thought, oh, it would be so cool to do couple's retreats, but neither of us had actually done that. Well, that kind of synergy came together during that walk that morning, to create what is now known as the marital magic curriculum. I call it a curriculum. Uh, it's really a, a number of things that we have done to try to strengthen and enhance and fortify marriages. So we have done several two-day retreats uh, where couples just go away for two days. We put them up in a hotel somewhere uh, teach them some powerful seminars, give them some homework and date night activities. 
uh, we've done several of those. We've done some date night presentations. Uh, we've done mission statement workshops. And then more recently, starting last January, we initiated the Marital Magic Cruise. And you'll hear the ads for that cruise on this uh, program today. Yeah, and, and we, um, that happened pretty quickly. That was in January. In May, we did our first two-day retreat. And, and guess where we did it? At, at that lodge. <laughs> at the very lodge that we were standing in front yeah. of looking at. So we created it in our minds initially. But, Paul, I'm really glad you mentioned why we created it, to enhance and, and build marriage, marriage relationships. And, uh, you know, it wasn't just for fun. It was for a purpose. Although it was fun, too. Well, I'll buy that. So this is also a great example of something we talked about a few episodes ago on this program, Craig, and that was how thoughts become things. Mm -hmm. And you and I both had this thought or this, this mental image of a couple's retreat where couples could come, get away from all the stresses of their everyday life, spend some time together as a couple with other like-minded couples who are also interested in strengthening and enhancing and fortifying their marriage and family. And to learn through these powerful seminars, well, that transformed from a thought into a thing. Uh, and it took that synergy, I think, between the two of us to get something started that has literally blessed hundreds of lives since. Well, and, and ours, too. I mean, that's been, well, a, wonderful, it's been a wonderful ours. thing. It's been a wonderful <laughs> thing for us, and I believe our wives as well. Mm -hmm. Because they've been involved. So for those of you who are interested also, we're, gonna, we're going to be doing another two-day retreat. We're actually extending this to another evening, so two plus days, uh, which will be held in Park City, on Park City, Utah, on September 27th through the 29th. We have a beautiful venue set up. It's one of these uh, shared ownership condominium slash hotel resort places that they have up there in park city and they're in abundance up there i can't even remember the name of the one we're using to tell you the truth but uh our, our events team has put together this fabulous package and we will be presenting that the theme of this retreat is good to great it's based on jim collins book good to great uh, which is geared toward business really but what we're trying to do is help you take your marriage from a great marriage from a good marriage to a great marriage or or you, you didn't make a mistake there, Paul. Or oh, from a great a, marriage to, to a, a greater marriage. I think that, that mm -hmm. came up at the last time we did this particular retreat. Well, what if I already have a great marriage? Awesome. Well, great. Bring that one. Let's see Bring, if we can make it even better. Yeah, this is, mm -hmm. this is not just for people who are... This is not for people that necessarily are struggling in their marriage, although I think we all do at times. Mm -hmm. This is for people who just want to make it the best that they can. That's right. You will hear an ad uh, for that event on next week's podcast. We don't have one this week, but on next week's, you'll start hearing an ad for that two-day retreat. I'm giving you an early heads up. If you want to get into one of our limited slots, because these are small events, we only take a few couples with us, call my clinic at 801-221-0223 and get registered for the Good to Great Marital Magic Couples Retreat. That's going to be fantastic. Craig, another thing I wanted to talk about, and this actually introduces the theme for the rest of today's program uh, as far as the cruise is concerned. Okay, we've got another cruise coming. You've heard the ads on this show. Uh, it's on January 26th. We're actually coming up on a deadline just next week, which is September 15th, 2007. That's when the registrations are due for at least your initial deposit to come on this cruise. So if you're thinking of coming, stop thinking, start acting. Let's get you registered. We are going to be taking some couples to the Eastern Caribbean for another Marital Magic cruise. And the theme of this cruise is the theme of today's program. And I'll just summarize it here. Marital Magic, a more perfect union. And this came from some discussions we had, Craig. Do you remember these? Oh, oh yes, I do. <laughs> We're talking about our retreats and the cruises and things and, and themes that we could have. Good to great is an awesome theme. And we were thinking, what about the preamble to the Constitution where it says, in order to form a more perfect union? Well, that's what we're all about. What better theme? We want to for form. Our we, we may have great, great unions, 
But we, they can always be greater or more perfect unions. Mm -hmm. That's right. So this is the theme of our cruise, and this is the theme of today's show, too. What, what I'd like to do, Craig, if this works with you, is take the next few minutes to, next few minutes, I mean the balance of our show today, to walk through this theme a little bit as it relates to couples. Now, the founding fathers, when they wrote the Constitution of the United States of America, were not necessarily thinking of it as applying to couples, although I believe that those founding fathers had a strong belief that the family is the root of our society and the fundamental unit of society, too. So, Craig, as you and I were talking about this, we both feel and agree that this theme, a more perfect union, applies to families and couples as much as it does to any nation or government. Right. And I shared with you, Paul, just before we got started, that uh, when I was in college, I, I minored in political science. I believe, somebody can fill me in if I'm wrong, I believe it was Aristotle that said that the polis is the man writ large. And what he meant by that is that the polis is the society mm -hmm. or the population. And that, and that meant that everything that applies to the individual or the couple or the family, all up the, the strata there, mm -hmm. clear to the population, to the polis, has the same needs. Mm -hmm. So the principles that apply to an individual, to a couple, to a family, etc., apply to the nation. And I think mm -hmm. the principles, principles apply everywhere. Mm -hmm. I think what we could do with this, and what we've done with our cruise curriculum, is take the preamble to the Constitution, break it out into those separate phrases, and talk about how that applies to a couple. <coughs> Excuse you're, me. You're going to be all right there, Doc? I don't have a cough button here. <laughs> oh, that caught me kind of funny. Um, breaking the, down these different phrases and talking about how it applies to a couple and what techniques you can begin to apply in your marriage today. I, this isn't an advertisement for the cruise, although we're going to be pitching it pretty heavy because we both believe in this thing, don't oh, we, Greg? Oh, yes. Uh, but this, don't, don't misunderstand what we're trying to do with today's program. I want you to take from this some ideas that you can take to immediately apply in your life and in your marriage to, to form a more perfect union. And if we can accomplish that today, that would be an, an enormous value to anyone who's listening in. When we come back from this first commercial break, we're going to hit it with established justice and ensure domestic tranquility. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Relishing a week with your sweetheart in paradise. Spending that same week with other like-minded couples who live in abundance. Increasing your knowledge through powerful seminars geared toward helping you take your marriage to a new level. This is only a fraction of the value waiting for you on this year's Marital Magic Couples Cruise. Producer Retreats has teamed up with Dr. Paul and Craig Rollo to set the theme for this year's cruise as a more perfect union. Join us on January 26, 2008 as we visit the beautiful Eastern Caribbean Islands aboard Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas. Call 1-800-591-2432 to select your package and book your spot. You can get more details at ProducerRetreats.com. Limited cabins are available for this event, so book today by calling 1-800-591-2432. We'll see you on board. If you are anything like me, that pile of books that you want to read is growing faster than the pile you have finished. When I recently completed Abundant Reading Systems course, I added a skill that now allows me to read much more rapidly and efficiently. I'm so excited about the potential that this brings to people that I am teaming up with Abundant Reading Systems to bring you an all-new single-day intensive speed reading workshop on Saturday, September 8th. In this intensive one-day workshop, 
We will teach you the principles behind effective reading and give you some techniques to begin applying those principles immediately. You can even apply your tuition toward the six-week course if you want to go farther. Register by calling 801-221-0223 or by clicking the events link at drpaul.org. That's 801-221-0223. So, Craig, you made a suggestion during the commercial break. We, you and I were chatting a little bit about the preamble to the Constitution. And this thing was written in order to, to preface perhaps the greatest document that was ever drafted on behalf of humanity. So we ought to read that. Do you have that well, in front of you? I, I do. I have it right in front of me. I've I, got it memorized, but I have to sing it. You, you know? have to sing? Oh. But, do you remember the old uh, Schoolhouse Rock thing that they used to play on PBS? Oh, we I, the people, in order to form a more perfect union. Well, you might as well just now sing it. Now I'm going to get texts from my brother <laughs> saying, don't, don't sing, sing on, on the... <laughs> <laughs> I was singing on my radio show before. And I, I got a number of text messages. Why don't you go ahead and read it, Okay, Would you share the preamble I'll just read us? it instead of singing it. Okay. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Awesome. Now, can I just share one little quick thing about that? Well, it, sure. It was, You're the guest. It was actually written by Governor Morris. And his intent in, in writing it was because he thought people wouldn't read the whole Constitution. So he wanted to encapsulate the entire Constitution. And this is the basic, basic uh, premises mm -hmm. that the Constitution covers. That's what it's for. And uh, Cleon Skousen in his book, um, The Making of America, calls it an inspired preamble. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's true. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Let's take that and break it apart a little bit. Establish justice. And let's apply that to a marriage. What does that mean in the context of a marriage? What comes to your mind, Craig? Well, what comes to my mind is some things like fairness, compassion, mercy, forgiveness. All those kinds of things mm -hmm. pop out to me right away. And, uh, and I think those are invaluable principles that apply to marriage and, and family, all mm -hmm. the whole thing, not just the marriage, the couplehood, but mm -hmm. also to the children, to the, the disciplining and so on. And I was going to add that part, too. I, I talk with a lot of my clients about parenting, discipline. One of, the, one of the audio products that I'm offering to people is Parental Power, which is a CD set that talks about the trade-off between control and maturity. And really, it's about establishing justice within the home. There's also an interesting, you, you mentioned a word that uh, isn't always associated with justice, and that's mercy. Mm -hmm. And there's an interesting dynamic there, too. Well, what uh, were you thinking? Well, there's a balance between justice and mercy. A lot of times we think that we want justice, when really we want mercy. You know, <laughs> if the... If the full effect of justice were to take place in our lives, I mean, think about it. If you, your weaknesses, for example, the thoughts that sort of stray into territory where they shouldn't go sometimes, the, the intentions that you have. If you were to experience a full measure of justice, you'd be toast. Oh, for sure. You'd be finished, you know. And in Christianity, this is a huge issue that has to do with the atonement of Christ and how he comes in and compensates, not by justice, but by mercy. And I heard a great quote once uh, from, from a fellow I respect greatly. His name's Truman G. Madsen. And he said, it is just that the truly penitent receive mercy. And I love that. Because, oh, that's great. You know, really, we're all kind of, 
if, if we have to, to give in to all the demands of justice, we're toast. What we really want is mercy. And what if in our relationships within the home, with our children, with our spouse, if we could have a balance of justice and mercy that allows us to have compassion on those around us? Think of what that would look like in a couple, for example. Oh, what yeah. comes to mind for you, Craig? Uh, what comes to mind for me is understanding someone else's uniqueness, their differences, their, mm -hmm. and allowing for those without getting all bent out of shape and upset mm -hmm. and demanding. Uh, we, get, we get in those modes of demandingness sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I, I hear this, this concept of, for, of uh, fairness thrown about a lot in therapy sessions, for example. Well, it's not fair. And mm -hmm. like you mentioned, I, I try to explain to them, help them understand that this, this whole thing of fairness in a marriage, are you sure you really want fairness? Mm -hmm. I say, because well, similar to what you said, if, if everything were perfectly fair, you would get exactly what you deserve. Right. That's, that's scary. Mm -hmm. At least it is for me. Maybe I'm alone here, but... Uh, I think we all need a measure of mercy. Absolutely. So, so this whole justice thing has to be balanced and counterbalanced by mercy. And I think we can tie it right into the next one too, which is ensure domestic tranquility. I really like this one as it relates to marriage. You know, the word domestic is there, first of all. Oh, yeah. It, fit, it fits so well. Which means... Domestic means having to do with the home. Right. Really. And, and sometimes we extend that to mean uh, the homeland or the right. home country, but it, it has a sense of having to do with the home, the home base, the home front. Tranquility. What it, does that mean? It implies an absence of, of conflict. And, mm -hmm. and when I say conflict, I'm not just talking about disagreement mm -hmm. because there's, there's bound to be disagreement there's bound to be some misunderstanding but with this with this concept of mercy we can bring in this tranquility that i think all of us desire uh, i think it's very painful to live in a situation that's not tranquil that's not peaceful that's conflicted that's a very painful situation to live in and it doesn't mm -hmm. mean we can't disagree we can disagree and still maintain that tranquility and i think that's one of the things we want to help with on this cruise and in our curriculum is to help that understanding of how how you can you can have these disagreements and still maintain tranquility let's take a look at that a little deeper okay um we've talked a number of times on this show and previous shows that i've done about paradigm now paradigm is your world view the way you see the world around you. And what you see, what you perceive, your paradigm, is what will determine your actions. Perspective determines action. That's one of the 13 principles of prosperity as taught by Rick Kerber. Right. Pers perspective determines action. So, let's say that you're getting into some kind of a conflict with your spouse. Now, uh, and I'm going to jump around a little bit here, too, because I really want to understand the principle and to convey some important messages about it. Conflict is not a bad thing. Some people interpret it as being bad because they're not quite sure what to do with it. Conflict arises because of differences. And it's those same differences that make us interesting to each other. So you think of a couple, for example. You wouldn't want to be married to yourself. Oh, I think some people think that would be great if she, yeah. if she would just she would just think like me, be like me. Well, and and sometimes people wish for more similarities because they're afraid of the conflicts. But really, when when I say you wouldn't want to be married to yourself, I mean you, not someone like you. Now, sure, you're going to marry someone who has some similar interests <laughs> and and goals. You know, hopefully, you're going to work out some of those things. Uh, but opposites attract too. You don't want to be married to yourself. That would be very uninteresting. Boring. Try holding your own hand. How's that? It's not, I, I just did it, and it's not very exciting. It, it just doesn't do it for you, does it? No. 
Right, so <laughs> and we could get farther into this, I'm sure. We did, in fact, at our two-day retreat, we have a section on intimacy. Oh, that one's fun. Oh, it is. That is a lot of fun. And we may do a podcast on that too, but we'll keep it nice and clean so we don't have to label it explicit, you know, when it goes on the internet. But uh, these differences that make us interesting to each other are the same things that create different preferences, that create different perceptions of the world. And anytime there's a difference, there's a potential conflict. So what do you do with the conflict? You know, and some people would take the avoidant approach and say, well, I'm just not going to engage at all. Or, you know, I'm not going to have a relationship with someone because, well, that brings conflict. Well, sure it does. But that's a natural part. You remember the, uh, the video clips we've shown at previous events? Sure. From the movie, Remember the Titans. Uh-huh. And in this movie, we were uh, highlighting a few pieces that demonstrated the stages of group development as originally coined by Bruce Tuckman back in the 60s, forming, storming, norming, and performing. Well, the storming stage always comes for everybody. I mean, any team that you form, including a marriage, is going to include this conflict. So... What do we do with that conflict? And I want to give you a minute to sound off on that, Craig. What, what do you do with the conflict that's more productive? Well, I'll, I'm glad you added the, that's more productive because there's a number of things you can do with it. You can escalate the conflict. You can be demanding. But it really boils down to what you said earlier about your paradigm. It depends on your paradigm. Here's what I find. Uh, many people are stuck in this mode and thinking and paradigm, if you will, of I have to be right. And then, they, then the conflict tends to escalate because they're not willing to open their mind, not so much that it falls out, but mm -hmm. open their mind enough to take in another perspective and actually mm -hmm. seriously consider it because there's fear involved for a lot of people in that. So if you can change your paradigm so that you're able to seriously look at other perspectives, those differences, mm -hmm. and consider them and come to some, some compromises or some agreements to disagree, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, then you can maintain, even, even amid the conflict, you can maintain a level of peace and tranquility that we want, that we, that we, we really thrive on that. That's right. I wonder if we could all be just humble enough to consider that we might be wrong <gasps> about this or that. That's the beginning of a paradigm shift. And then you can do all kinds of productive things with the conflict that is a natural part of forming a relationship with someone else. Ensure domestic tranquility. We'll be right back. Relishing a week with your sweetheart in paradise. Spending that same week with other like-minded couples who live in abundance. Increasing your knowledge through powerful seminars geared toward helping you take your marriage to a new level. This is only a fraction of the value waiting for you on this year's Marital Magic Couples Cruise. Producer Retreats has teamed up with Dr. Paul and Craig Rollo to set the theme for this year's cruise as a more perfect union. Everything I Join us on January 26, 2008, as we visit the beautiful Eastern Caribbean Islands aboard Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas. Call 1-800-591-2432 to select your package and book your spot. You can get more details at ProducerRetreats.com. Limited cabins are available for this event, so book today by calling 1-800-591-2432. We'll see you on board. This is Dr. Paul, the shrink who expands your life. I'm so glad that you've joined me for the Live on Purpose podcast. Please visit my website, drpaul.org. There you can subscribe to my weekly e-zine, Empower. Browse the events page to get connected with what's coming up or pick up some CDs or other great products. I also want to point you toward our sponsors, creationtreecoaching.com and producerretreats.com. 
If you are anything like me, that pile of books that you want to read is growing faster than the pile you have finished. When I recently completed Abundant Reading Systems course, I added a skill that now allows me to read much more rapidly and efficiently. I'm so excited about the potential that this brings to people that I am teaming up with Abundant Reading Systems to bring you an all-new single-day intensive speed reading workshop on Saturday, September 8th. In this intensive one-day workshop, we will teach you the principles behind effective reading and give you some techniques to begin applying those principles immediately. You can even apply your tuition toward the six-week course if you want to go farther. Register by calling 801-221-0223 or by clicking the events link at drpaul.org. That's 801-221-0223. So just, just before the break, Craig, we were talking about ensure domestic tranquility. And as we were talking about that and how every relationship will have conflict, there's always a storming stage when you put together a team. What to do with it that's more productive? And there's there have been a few things that we've shared in previous events that I... I have found to be personally very powerful, and we get positive feedback from our attendees that these are helpful things. One of those things is to ask another question. Yeah, I like to do a section called Question Your Questions. I don't think we, we are aware of how we are making the decisions and how we're coming up with our perspective, but basically mm-hmm. it's, it's through asking our, ourselves questions. Um, and it, there are certain kinds of questions that lead us in typically negative directions as opposed to those that are more productive. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the best questions I've ever heard, I heard it from Tony Robbins, was what else could this mean? And that is a potentially relationship-saving question. Oh, it certainly is. So if if we... Give some examples of how that might be used. uh, Well, let's see. I, I, I like to use the lint thing my son oh yeah in my house everybody's instructed to clean the lint out of the dryer each time they put a new load in and um, so one day I go down and there's obviously a a ton of lint in this and I'm thinking okay Mm -hmm. somebody's not cleaning and my mind immediately went to Daniel my son Mm -hmm. I thought oh Daniel he did this you know I made that assumption and then I thought I, I asked that question. I literally consciously asked that question. What else could this mean? I thought, well, it could mean it was just a very linty load. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it could mean that may, maybe it's even somebody else. And it turned out to be somebody else. It turned out to be my sweet wife. Uh-huh. Uh, now I could have gotten all upset if I'd have, if I'd have said it's Daniel and it means that that he's not being responsible and he's he's it, not listening to me. He's not following my instructions. He doesn't care. I could have all of those things could have come from that kind of a question. Oh sure. What's wrong with him? That's another. Mm-hmm. That's a question that that sometimes. What's wrong with that kid? Am I? Or my wife. Or you know, my... And that's an interesting question because you can always find something wrong. And, and we ask that about ourselves too. But in this right. case, we're talking about couples and we're talking about that relationship with, the, with our spouse. Mm-hmm. So when we ask those questions that naturally lead to negative responses, we're going to ensure dom- something other than domestic tranquility. <laughs> that's right. The domestic tranquility also brings to mind the importance of empathy. And I think empathy, Mm -hmm. I I like to define that in two ways. Well, there's two parts to it is a better way to say that, Mm -hmm. that you understand and care about how someone else feels. And this is a very important skill to gain in a relationship, to have that empathy, to really understand and care how someone else feels. And here's another good tool for ensuring domestic tranquility. Choose the loving response. And this gets back to what you were talking about too, Craig, with the questions. Can you ask a different question? Something like, what would the loving response be? Well, one, one of the books that I read uh, called Mindful Loving 
by Henry Grayson talks about the question. Uh, he just forms it this way. What would love do? Mm-hmm. What would love do in this situation? Right. And be honest with yourself. Look at the interactions that you have. If we could videotape you interacting with your spouse, would how many people out of 100 that we show that videotape to would, would define what they see as a loving response? And if you can back up and look at it from the outside a little bit, are you really choosing a loving response? And this has nothing to do with your spouse. What I mean is, it doesn't matter how they're treating you. How are you treating your spouse? And if you will choose the loving response, it's going to make a difference in that relationship, regardless of what your spouse is doing. I work with, well, you do too, Craig, uh, a lot of teenagers. Sure. And... Uh, in fact, I think you just came from a group of teens, didn't I you? I sure did. <laughs> I've had some of my teenage clients tell me before, well, I'll respect them when they respect me. Oh, I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. You can tell me. I'm a shrink. Well, I it can't count that. I can't count <laughs> that can't high, count Paul. That. You know, I have to, I I'd have to take my shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, this. what's wrong with that statement? What that means is... I am going to allow someone else's behavior to determine how I choose to act in this moment. And whether it's respect or love or compassion, you choose the loving, compassionate, respectful response. Why? Because they deserve it? No. Not necessarily. Because you are a loving, compassionate, respectful person. And that's what you choose to do. That's how you run your life. Regardless of those other people, I can't. I can't tell you, Craig. I can't t- <laughs> tell me, Paul. Uh, listeners, I can't tell you. Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you that this is one of the most powerful ways to ensure domestic tranquility. If everyone will drive their own car, so to speak, choose the loving response, choose the compassionate response, choose the respectful response regardless of what you're getting from other people, and just watch what starts to happen to domestic tranquility. Oh, that'd be great. Let's move on, shall we? Sure. Provide. I'm pausing there on purpose. For the common defense. Okay, now I stop to provide. Because... that word carries a lot of implications, too. I think that there, there are a lot of responsibilities that parents have within a family. And if, even if you're not a parent, if, you, if you're in a family of any kind, you have a responsibility to provide certain things. This has the feel of producing, creating, bringing to the table. You're not just there to take things away. You're not there to see what you can get out of this. Trust me, you will get plenty out of it if you will provide and put plenty into it. It's, it's just the natural way of things. If you are providing, I, I love that you stopped there, Paul, because it, it just emphasizes that responsibility, the stewardship that I have as a hus- not only as a husband but as a father as well to mm-hmm. provide for the common defense. Well, now I guess we go to what is what are we providing here exactly? What are we defending and how do we do it? And what are we defending against? Right. As well. Because that, that idea of defense is to protect. To protect what? Well, to protect the family. The common defense has to do with the family. In the context that we're talking about it here today at least. What are the threats? that are out there for the family. And you know, I want to I want to talk for just a few minutes about risk. Because if there is a risk to your family, that's what you're defending against, right? Right. I have uh I have an office on a very busy street down in Provo University Avenue. And uh, I've sometimes walked clients right down to the edge of the street and there are cars coming both directions fairly fast. Okay? Let's just pretend that something that you really want is on the other side of the street. 
Well, to get there, you're going to have to cross over this street to get what it is that you want. Now, there's at least, that's risky, right? Does that sound like a risky proposition to you, Craig? Um, it definitely could be. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Cars coming by, all right? Yeah. That's the risk. Let's just let that represent anything that threatens your family. There's at least three things you can do with the risk. You can ignore it. Now, if you ignore it, what you're going to do is put on your blinders and just step out into that street. Boom, head on out. What's going to happen? Or what's likely to happen? What's likely to happen is you're going to get nailed. Right. You're going to get clobbered, aren't you? If you ignore risk, you increase danger. And trust me, folks, there is enormous risks out there. There are enormous risks. My English teacher might be listening. <laughs> there are enormous risks out there to your family. There are multiple threats. And if you don't recognize them, then we need to talk. If you ignore the risk, you increase the danger. Well, another thing you can do is avoid the risk. No, nope, I'm not going. Just sit down on this side of the street. It's too risky. I'm not going. What? The safer, right? It's much safer. Lost opportunity. Much safer. But you don't get what's on the other side of the street. You lose that opportunity, whatever it is that you're, you're seeking on the other side. A ship in the harbor is safe. But that's not what ships are for. I saw that cross-stitched on a, uh, a wall hanging once, and I've just always enjoyed that thought. Your family has a purpose, and part of that purpose is to go out there and interact with the world in ways that create value. If you put your family in a fallout shelter, if you shut yourself off from all of the media, if you never interact with the world in any way, that's going to be safer. But you don't get to fulfill the purpose that your family is there for. So you can ignore the risk, that increases the danger. You can avoid the risk, that cuts off your, your possibility to achieve your potential. Or the third option, which I personally favor, is to manage the risk. And to manage the risk, you're gonna take a little walk about a half block this way or a half block that way. You're gonna come to a signal. You push the button, you wait for the signal to change. You still look both ways, and then you carefully cross the street. Now, does that eliminate all the risk? No. No. It doesn't. You could still get clobbered, right? Sure. But you've brought your risk down to a manageable, acceptable level, and you get yourself across the street. That means you get what you're after. So I want to apply that to pro uh, providing for the common defense. And as you look at those risks and those dangers that are out there, those threats to your family and to the integrity of your marriage, and there are many of them, anything from, uh, from the media and some of the influences that are, that are there to substance abuse and addiction to infidelity or, or unfaithfulness within the couple, there are so many threats. Let's manage those threats. Don't pretend that they're not there. And don't just avoid living because they're there. There's a lot that you can do. Right. Craig, I kind of, kind of took over there. For <laughs> I get passionate That's about fine. that, as you can I tell. I love your passion, Paul. That's fine. We're coming back in after this commercial break with some summaries from Mr. Craig Rollo, and we'll move on with this topic. And when you pray, you pray for strength to help you carry on when the troubles come your way. If you are anything like me, that pile of books that you want to read is growing faster than the pile you have finished. When I recently completed Abundant Reading Systems course, I added a skill that now allows me to read much more rapidly and efficiently. I'm so excited about the potential that this brings to people that I am teaming up with Abundant Reading Systems to bring you an all-new single-day intensive speed reading workshop on Saturday, September 8th. In this intensive one-day workshop, we will teach you the principles behind effective reading and give you some techniques to begin applying those principles immediately. You can even apply your tuition toward the six-week course if you want to go farther. Register by calling 801-221-0223 or by clicking the events link at drpaul.org. That's 801-221-0223.
relishing a week with your sweetheart in paradise, spending that same week with other like-minded couples who live in abundance, increasing your knowledge through powerful seminars geared toward helping you take your marriage to a new level. This is only a fraction of the value waiting for you on this year's Marital Magic Couples Cruise. Producer Retreats has teamed up with Dr. Paul and Craig Rollo to set the theme for this year's cruise as a more perfect union. Join us on January 26, 2008 as we visit the beautiful Eastern Caribbean Islands aboard Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas. Call 1-800-591-2432 to select your package and book your spot. You can get more details at ProducerRetreats.com. Limited cabins are available for this event, so book today by calling 1-800-591-2432. We'll see you on board. Welcome back to our last segment today. We've got more to talk about than we have time to talk about it, Greg. I think we do. And I sort of took off with that last segment. And as far as managing the risks, they're there, people. They are there. And I think you already know that because you're living your life and you're experiencing those things and those threats that come to your family, to, to the very core of your life. If you ignore them, they're going to clobber you. And if you avoid them, your family's not going anywhere. And so, you're not going anywhere. And you're stuck. Yeah, that's one of the de definitions of captivity. Do whatever it takes to manage that risk. That's the whole reason why we do coaching, Craig. Oh, that's right. It's to help people identify and overcome any of the barriers to their success and prosperity. And to manage those risks along the way. Exactly. That ties into our next issue, actually. Promote the general welfare. And... You know, honestly, Paul, when we were working on this, I thought, promote the general welfare. That sounds kind of boring. Oh. But the more I thought about it, more... can I share a little story about you, Paul, and your, and your sweet wife, Vicki? Well, I can always edit it out, I guess. Oh, I suppose you could. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Greg. No, when, I trust you. When, uh, when I think of promote the general welfare, I think of providing opportunities for growth and, and progress in our lives. And I, I watched Paul... And my wife does this too. I don't do it as good as she does, but Paul's wife, Vicky, is involved in a lot of things. She loves to do plays. Oh, she's amazing. And and so here's Paul and the rest of his family supporting her and promoting her general welfare. This gives her an opportunity to use her unique abilities and go out there and produce in that format. And I think that is that kind of thing that I think this promote the general welfare encompasses, at least part of it. Mm -hmm. Well, think about what true wealth is. Sometimes when we talk about welfare, we're thinking about financial or economic welfare. And it definitely includes that. Sure. In fact, these principles govern every aspect of life. And if you start to master these principles, you're going to see a huge difference in your economic life as well. Yeah, when I read this, I wasn't even thinking of, of the financial aspect, although like you said, it is one aspect that, mm -hmm. that has to be promoted. And that would be with our children too, Paul. I'll mm -hmm. share another one. Paul is working with his sons at creating their own business. And we're talking, uh, I think Adam's, what, 15? And uh, Adam's nodding. I've got him Ryan's, on the control board over here. <laughs> and Ryan's 17, I believe, isn't he? Mm -hmm. That's uh, right. And he's, he's helping them to learn how to create a business. Now that, to me, Paul, is promoting the general welfare in mm -hmm. your family, both, uh, both your spouse and also your children. So I'll brag on you a little bit. Well, thank you, Craig. I've seen you do similar things, though. I, wa I watch you work with your youngest child, Aaron is this amazing little kid who's got all kinds of energy. And Aaron's what? Four? He's five. He's five now. Yeah, he's in kindergarten. And, and he's just a fireball, this kid. Um, but Craig has been teaching him principles. Uh, oh, Craig and I go on walks every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 5 o'clock. And uh, that's our little philosophy walk and talk. If any of you are interested in joining us, there's ways to make that happen. Send me an email, drpaul at liveonpurposeradio.com. And uh, we'll talk. 
But anyway, uh, Craig has taught his son to do the same thing that, that you and I do, Craig. All right. Uh, we pick up trash while we're walking. We figured, hey, we don't like litter. Well, what are we going to do about this? And so we're picking up trash as we're walking. Well, Aaron has, has learned to do that. And uh, So there's a lot of things that you can teach within the home that promote the general welfare and encourage every member of the family to go out there and create value for others in their own unique way. And everybody has their way that they can do this. And as they do that, there two things start to happen. Your life becomes magical because you're doing what you love. And you become wealthy in many ways, including financially. So that's, that's the brief version of Promote the General Welfare. We've got a couple of other fun things that we'll hit uh, in some of our longer events. Uh, and, Paul, if you don't mind, we probably ought to skip to that last one. And, and Secure then, the blessings of liberty to ourselves and posterity. Let's go there. Um, I've, I've got the book here in front of me, The 5,000-Year Leap, by Cleon Skousen. And in uh, the 26th principle is, The core unit which determines the strength of any society is the family. Therefore, the government should foster and protect its integrity. John Locke, he quotes John Locke in here. Just, it's not too long. I'll go ahead and quote it. Paul gave me permission. It will be appreciated that the strength and stability of the family is of such vital importance to the culture that any action by the government to debilitate or cause dislocation in the normal trilateral structure of the family becomes not merely a threat to the family involved, but a menace to the very foundations of society itself. And when I read that, I thought of this, this particular part of the preamble and how the way we help ensure that those blessings of liberty to our posterity is to create it in our own families and to, mm. to live that princ the principles that bring that kind of freedom within our families. Because if our families start to, start to lose that, then our society will as well. I think that this is a call to all freedom-loving people, wherever they might be, to take seriously the stewardship that they have over their, their marriage, which is the foundation of the family, that's the basic unit of the family, and their extended family, including their children, their brothers and sisters, uncles, aunts, cousins, nieces, nephews. It starts there, Craig. It does. It starts there. And I think that if all freedom-loving people will take that more seriously and start there, there are some enormous, wonderful things that can start happening with our society. Absolutely. We can maintain what we have and actually improve, I think, as a society. And that's why, Paul, for me, I can't speak for you, but for me, I think this is this stuff we talk about, this stuff we teach is absolutely vital to the success of not only the individual, but the couple, the family, and society. And I think, I think we're lacking in many ways as a society in some of these areas. And so it's, our, it's my goal, and I think, I think you join me in this. You can tell me if you don't. That this is my goal, and I think our goal is to bring the level of prosperity, the level of wealth and health, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially, and relationally. To elevate all of humanity by starting with yourself, and then taking it to that basic unit of the family and just moving on from there. And if we don't start there, where are we going to start? Well, and the problem I see in, in the world, at least as I see it uh, in my work, is that everybody else wants it to start somewhere else. Oh, if you, just like you said earlier, well, if they'll do it, then I'll do it. If they'll be this way, then I'll be that way. Mm -hmm. Here again, can you ask a better question? Oh, and, for sure. And here's a good one. If not me, who? And if not now, when? It's you. It's me. It's, it's us. It's, take it personally. This is your job. And stop waiting for somebody else to take care of you. This is the, the victim paradigm that pervades our society so much. Someone will come. 
Someone will take care of me. I show a video clip about that. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> With the escalator. These people are going up an escalator. Dun, 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 and it gets stuck. The escalator gets stuck, Craig. And then these people freak out. <laughs> oh, this is all I need. I was already late. Oh. Don't worry, someone will come. You know, and they go through this whole routine. And it's just hilarious because they could walk off of the escalator. But they don't, they don't get it. And this is the victim mentality that pervades our society. And you see this sometimes in times of crisis. Also, I'm thinking of this whole New Orleans thing when that uh, flood went through New Orleans. And people are waiting for somebody to come and rescue them? I hope that anyone who's listening to this program will take responsibility first for themselves, secondly for their families, and let's raise this country one family at a time. Absolutely. I'm with you. Well, maybe we can do more than one at a time. Okay, let's do a few. Pass this around, will you, to, to families who love freedom, families that you love and that you want to hear this kind of a message. Please send it out to them. Craig, it's been awesome having you on this show today. Oh, it's been a blast. Before we sign off, I want to give you an opportunity to tell people a little bit about how they can get contact with you. How can they get connected with you? We've talked about some of the events that we're doing. Right. You know, come join us. We'd love to have you at this retreat. We'll spend a couple of days with you. Bring your wife. Um, we'll have a blast. Other than that, Craig, how can, how can people get in touch with you? Well, I have, I have connected up with Creation Tree Coaching. And I'm, we are so glad to I'm, have you on board, too. I, I'm excited about that. And so uh -huh. I think it's Craig at Creation Tree Coaching, isn't it? Craig pretty at sure. CreationTreeCoaching.com. If it's not, we'll change it to be that. Okay. Okay. And, and then, of course, I have my own, my own take charge at CraigRolo.com. You, you can reach me through that. That's my email. So your personal website is CraigRolo.com. Yes, sir. Spell Rolo. R-O-L-L-O. -L -L -O. Unlike the candy, which only has one L. But it's pronounced the same. Okay, so Craig Rolo with two L's dot com. And uh, that website will have a little bit more about you. Oh, yes. And uh, some of the things that you're offering, products, seminars, speaking. I know you do a lot sure. of that kind of thing. You bet. And, folks, if you haven't been in on a seminar where Craig's presenting, you're missing a treat. He's, this is one reason I've chosen to present seminars with Craig. We team up on the Marital Magic thing because we have some, so much fun. It's just fun, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, and I and I need Paul to kind of keep me in line a little bit. I, well, that's I for little, sure. I can get a little crazy, but Paul kind of mellows me out a little. He he takes that side. <laughs> <laughs> well, Craig, thank you for what you've contributed here today. I just You're want welcome. want to encourage all of our listeners to take seriously this message that we've sent out there today. Form a more perfect union. And start where, where it starts. Start in the family. Apply these principles. And, and you can create something fantastic. We've played uh, some commercials about the cruise that's coming up. Uh, just once again, if you're coming on that cruise with us, and I've had so many people tell me, Oh yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. I wouldn't miss it. Well, if we don't see you on the ship's register, you're not coming. So make sure you call and get registered for that. We'd love to have you on board for our two-day retreat. Um, for those of you who are coming on Saturday, speed reading, all kinds of great stuff happening. You stay tuned. Come in next week again for, for the next episode of Live on Purpose Radio. This is Dr. Paul signing off.